When you experience Jesus today, the name of the Lord will become your tower. Perhaps you've tried so many religions, I know. You've tried so many religions, you've tried so many of them. It doesn't make difference. But I want to tell you, try Jesus. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. Try Jesus, and it's going to be a whole lot different in your life. Your life is going to turn around. Your life is going to be glorious. Your life is going to change. Things will become anew in your life, and the glory of the kingdom will become yours. And perhaps you can't even sleep in the night, but when the power of the kingdom comes into your life, you'll be have peace. And when peace comes into your life, you could sleep. Because the peace of God that passes all human understanding will be your portion. We'll abide with you. We'll stay with you. Amen. The glory of the kingdom. And the Bible says in verse 3, In this lay a great multitude, multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the world. In this pool, because people know that anywhere there's Jesus, there's miracle. Anywhere there's Jesus, there's healing. Anywhere there's Jesus, there's deliverance. Anywhere there's Jesus, there's the anointing of God. Anywhere there's Jesus, there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when people come to this war, because they know that Jesus is there. They know this world has five porches. They know this Jesus is symbolic. They know that this pool stands for Jesus. It stands for the presence of heaven on earth. It stands for the kingdom of God, for the glory of the kingdom of God. So any people come at each point in time around this pool to be delivered, to be healed. So that I'm telling you today that anywhere the name of Jesus is mentioned, and you believe it, there's power, there's authority, there's deliverance. And as you receive the name of Jesus into your life today, as you believe in him, as you confess your sin, as you, grip, as, as, as you receive Jesus into your spirit, I speak unto you that receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name, uh, and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh. Somebody wrote or sent us that email um, through YouTube some few um, days ago about uh, prayer for deliverance, and God just started to speak to me right now, and I start to speak to you that be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to you and your family that be delivered in Jesus' name. Any situation that you are going through, or that your family is going through, your parents are going through, all those spiritual situations, all those attacks in the spirit, I well, speak to you, I speak to you by the mighty name of Jesus. But delivered in Jesus' name, I say all those burdens be removed, all those yoke be removed, but broken in Jesus' name. And I say all those shackles and I'm shackle of the enemy upon your life are broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I said, let those gates be open. Ah, hey, lift up all those gates. And ye be lifted out ye everlasting doors. And let the King of Glory come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Oh, lift up your gate. And even ye be lifted up ye everlasting doors. And let the King of Glory. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of Glory. Father, speak right now for so many who are receiving your word, who are hearing your word, that the King of Glory will start to come into their life. The King of Glory will start to come into their business, into their studies into their career, into their family, into their marriage, into their head, into their situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, as many who are many who are confused, as many who are confused right now, let the King of glory come into their life in Jesus' name. Amen. The glory of the kingdom. When the glory of the kingdom comes into a people's life, they become a new personality. They become a new person. Things will change. Things will pass away. Things will become new. And that is why the Bible says that where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. Anywhere you see the carcass, you see the eagles gathered around it. So anywhere there's Jesus, anywhere there's Jesus, anywhere there's Jesus, what you see around, you see blind people, you see lame, you see people who are impotent, you see people who are, who are sick, because they know, they know, give me Jesus and there's healing, give me Jesus and there's peace. And when Jesus come into town, people flock, see people flock, see people move around, because when 
when the name of Jesus is mentioned, uh, and that's what the Bible says, uh, oh, it says there's no name that's given among men whoever will be saved. Uh. Ah, the name of Jesus is the most powerful name you could think about. Uh. The name of Jesus uh, is the most powerful name. Uh. Uh, that's what the Bible says, uh, that the mention of the name of Jesus, uh, hey, let every knee bow and every tongue confess uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The glory of the kingdom. The glory of the kingdom. And the Bible says here in verse 4, For an angel went down at a sudden season to the pool and troubled the water. Who saw them first after the trouble of the water step in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Amen. This is very profound. This is very profound. And if you've not been listening, listen right now. Listen right now, this is very profound. Because sometimes, sometimes, there's some troubling that comes around us because God wants to wrote a miracle. There's some troubling that comes sometimes because God wants to wrote a miracle. There's some things that God dices sometimes because God wants to wrote a miracle. There's some things that seem as if it becomes more tougher because God wants to wrote a miracle. The Bible says here that the angel comes out and troubles the water. The water is at peace before, but because God wants to wrote a miracle, because the glory of the Lord wants to come down, because the power of the Lord wants to come down, because the Holy Ghost wants to do something, because the anointing of God is down, because the glory of the Lord comes down, God, the angel comes out and, and trouble the water and shake the water and shake the water and miss the water and miss the water and miss the water. But have some problem in your life. Uh, I don't be discouraged. You say, I've prayed. Uh, I've seek the Lord. Uh, why is this thing happening? I want to tell you because of the glory of the kingdom. When the glory of the kingdom wants to come down, when God wants to make you to be a full partaker of the glory of the kingdom, when God wants you to experience is the glory of the kingdom in a full dimension. Sometimes the water has to be troubled. Sometimes the water has to be troubled. Sometimes the water has to be troubled. So I want to tell you today, if the water of your life is troubled, remember the five porches. Remember Jesus. When you receive Jesus, there will be peace. Grab Jesus and there will be peace. Grab Jesus and I'll be cleansing. Grab Jesus and I'll be healing. The Bible says, uh, He said, And whosoever first, <laughs> when there is troubling of the water, whosoever first knock upon the gate of heaven, <laughs> He said, Ask and you shall be given. Ask, uh, knock, it shall be opened unto you. <laughs> whosoever, whosoever, Whosoever come, he said, Wherefore we may come boldly unto the throne of grace and, and receive help in the time of need. Uh, so that when God troubled that water, God is just telling you, it's time for you to move ahead. The first verse where we started, the Bible says, After the feasting, Jesus went up. He says, He went up to Jerusalem. After the feasting, some people will still stay there and feasting. Then Jesus will come, then the Spirit of God will come and trouble the water so that they could move up. But Jesus did not really stay there and allow them, allow some to trouble, to, 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 to stir him up. He went up himself. So sometime, if you just stay at the single point, the angel of God will come and trouble the water so that you could move up. He said, go up. He said, no, go up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what the Bible says. It says, when in that time, in that day, when there was persecution of the disciples uh, in Jerusalem, you know, you know, the Bible says that, <coughs> it says, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness of me in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. But you know, when the, when, when the disciples were contented in Jerusalem, they stayed there, and they were just happy in Jerusalem until persecution came. So when persecution came, they now spread around. Start preaching the gospel as they, were, as they were running around. So if the pastor did not come, they will still stay in, the, in Jerusalem. Perhaps some of us will not even receive the gospel today. But when the pastor came, they, they, they moved around. So here too, Jesus, after the feasting, he went up. He didn't stay. So some of us are still staying at the level that we're supposed to have moved up. And that's why the angel will come and stir the water so that we could move up. 
to a higher level. God wants us to move higher. God wants us to move up. Amen. And so if there's any situation in your life, any condition, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Perhaps even that situation you, you can't even share with someone. You can't discuss with someone because it's just so personal. It's so secret. You prayed. You cried. It's in your family life.